The first question is one of my favorite questions because the like simple answer is very obvious, but I think there is a second answer that's maybe not so simple, and maybe not so obvious, but maybe also true. And the question is, is Bitcoin a commodity-backed currency? And may some other cryptocurrency decide to create a commodity-backed currency? Oh, okay, so the answer to question one, strictly speaking, is obviously not. Like, you can't say, I am going to take a Bitcoin and take it somewhere and someone's going to give me an ounce of gold or half an ounce of silver or a goat or anything else, right? Like, the, you can only redeem a Bitcoin for itself. And then the answer to the second question is also obvious, which is, can you make a cryptocurrency that is commodity-backed? And the answer is to that is yes, and many people have done so. And there's a but, right? There's a but in there. And the but is, but not one without counterparty risk. So what do I mean by this? Bitcoin does not have counterparty risk. If you have a Bitcoin, you have the Bitcoin. Your bank, if you make a deposit at the bank, what you're thinking that you have are a lot of people that aren't, that aren't um, fully understanding of finance. They go, oh, they're holding my money and I have the money. That's not what you have. What you have is you're an unsecured or partially secured creditor to the bank. You have lent the bank money, you have made a loan to the bank, and the bank is your borrower and they owe you money. And so if the bank does something annoying, like go bankrupt, and depending on what your deposit insurance scheme is, you may not get your money back. You have counterparty risk. When you own a Bitcoin, you don't have counterparty risk. You have a Bitcoin. Now you have all types of you have all types of other risks, like you could lose your private key. Someone could steal your private key and take your Bitcoin. But what you don't have is the risk that you think you have a Bitcoin and then you in fact someone else's bankruptcy means you don't have it anymore. This is when you have it in your own wallet, right? If you have it at an exchange, you don't own a Bitcoin. You're again an unsecured creditor of the exchange. You have a claim on the exchange that is denominated in Bitcoins. Maybe, depending on how the courts treat it. But you do not own a Bitcoin. You own a financial asset that sort of vaguely looks like a Bitcoin, but not a Bitcoin. And so when we're saying you have a Bitcoin, you have a Bitcoin, and I kind of tongue-in-cheek said you can redeem it for a Bitcoin. It's not like some bank you can go redeem it for a Bitcoin. You can't take it anywhere. It's just a Bitcoin. But if you have a bit um, <coughs> yen, the theory is you can change your bit and get a yen for it. For you to be able to get a yen for it, someone has to give you that yen. The yen doesn't exist in the crypto world. So whoever is running that system and saying, I'm going to deliver a yen or a bar of gold or a diamond or oil is your real counterparty. And so then you have to evaluate the counterparty risk of how likely are they at the appropriate point in time when you said, oh, I'm, I'm giving you my token, you're giving me, you're giving me my gold, diamond, oil, goat, etc., if they will actually deliver on their obligation. The risk that they will not deliver is your counterparty risk. So the simple answer to this question is Bitcoin is not commodity-backed. Yes, you can have commodity-backed cryptocurrencies, but they introduce counterparty risk, which Bitcoin does not have. But I want to come back to the first question. Maybe Bitcoin is commodity-backed. You say, like, what's the commodity? What are you buying when you buy a Bitcoin? Just a kind of imaginary internet money that sort of kind of lives on your computer, you can't even see it, and like, what is it? Some people, oh, it has no utility. It's just a, it's just a speculative asset. And I think that's wrong, actually. What a Bitcoin allows, 
what owning a Bitcoin allows you to do is to move a Bitcoin across the Bitcoin ledger electronically, digitally around the world based on your, you yourself without someone being able to block you, right? You can make an uncensorable transfer of a Bitcoin from place A to place B. One way to think about it is you have purchased on a multi-lane highway a lane on the highway where you know the starting point it's you your wallet you know the ending point it could be any Bitcoin address in the world so this is a pretty cool highway right like it doesn't go from Nicosia to Larnaca or Livingston Zambia to Lusaka I'm watching what's happening in the chat it goes from wherever you are on your digital device to any other place in the world and you can move it at your <coughs> own choice and no one can block you from moving it. it's definitely uncensorable and how how wide is your lane well it depends how many bitcoins you bought if you bought a tenth of a tenth of a tenth of one percent of a bitcoin you can move a tenth of a tenth of a tenth of one percent of a Bitcoin. If you bought 20 Bitcoins, you can move 20 Bitcoins. You have bought or maybe temporarily rented that lane. Right? You own it so long as you have it. When you move the Bitcoin, then the other person owns it. And you say, yeah, but like, so what? Like, why does that matter? Right? Like, who, who cares if I own that lane? Well, if a sufficient number of people think a Bitcoin is worth $10, and why would they think it's worth $10 or $10,000 or a million dollars or $50 or $3,000? Well, because a sufficient number of people ha want to move a sufficient amount of value through these lanes or want the ability to move a sufficient amount of value through these lanes, then that's how much value you can move through these lanes. And I know it's weird, right? It sounds circular. But I do think if you ask me, like, what is Bitcoin backed by? It's backed by this. And you are purchasing. You are purchasing this ability to move value from place A to place B. How much that ability is worth has to do for many at any point in time base is based on how much a Bitcoin is worth. So if you bought a Bitcoin, you bought one Bitcoin? Yeah, it is. It's circular. But many things are circular, right? Like the, the why the dollar is a good medium of exchange is circular. Why do you, do you, why do you accept dollars? Well, because everyone else accepts dollars. If tomorrow I knew that everyone else on the planet no longer wanted dollars, then I wouldn't want a dollar either. Given that I know dollars are pretty liquid and if I have a dollar I'll give it to someone somewhere on planet earth and I'll get a fairly predictable amount of value back for a dollar then I'm willing to accept it and so <clears throat> I distinguish this I distinguish this from something that is truly truly just a collectible imagine if we said this piece of paper is Polymetis coin. And I'm just going to cut it up into 21 pieces. I guess you're that. Now someone's going to tell me paper's valuable. But let's say paper wasn't, you couldn't write on paper. And you have this thing and you're just going to look at it. Okay. I mean, that's fine. It's um, collectibles do have value, right? There's a lot of people that buy all types of things because they're rare. But I think in some people, some say, oh, Bitcoin's a collectible. And maybe there's some aspect of that. Right? Maybe it's like, oh, I want to own a Bitcoin because I want to own a Bitcoin in the same way that I want to own a Keith Haring signed edition and put it in storage. I don't want to look at it. I just want to know that I have it. So there might be a little bit of that, but it's a little different. There is an underlying level of utility that 
doesn't exist in pure, pure, pure collectibles. So, arguably, it's back, it, the commodity that it's backed by is the Bitcoin ledger. It's certainly not backed by a third a commodity outside the system. That's for sure the case. And how much that commodity is worth is, well, the price of Bitcoin.